wins, 13 defeats, one draw, with two wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Shemya Novica, Schlonsk, Poland. Please welcome Jakob Laskowski. Laskowski. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the white trunks with the burgundy and silver trim. This southpaw scaled at already 9 stone, 11 pounds, 7 ounces. His professional record, a perfect one. Five fights, five victories. Fighting out of the leads, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Corey. So six rounds scheduled in a lightweight contest. Corey O'Regan on your screen. Jakub Laskowski from Simeonis in Poland, part of the Silesia Boxing Stable. We had that Alexander Nagolski, part of the same stable over for John Hedges uh, a few weeks ago. We talked about the uh, kind of affiliation with Mark Bateson and, uh, and Jack Bateson too. That kind of typical style, wide base, obviously southpaw as well. Lovely shot selection, great balance, and you can really see it, can't you, in in his the way he shapes up. Yeah, Corey O'Regan's come out sharp shooting from the start, skipping in and out of range. Uh, he's looking sharp. Just step back there, avoid an attack, looking for his own shots. Got six rounds to, to break this guy down, so it's going to be interesting to see if he can go through the gears and uh, put a dent in him and hopefully stop him later on. Yeah, Skowski technically just has a habit of sometimes kind of rocking over the, the front foot, part of his, his rhythm. Just wonder with the southpaw stance and the, the hand speed of O'Regan that he might just walk him on to either just, just kind of rear hand uppercuts or, or straight left hands at some point in the contest. Quite an unorthodox style. He is. And I think that is, is due to the Muay Thai background, sometimes in transition. I know that I think Danny Wilson, of course, uh, Florian Marku, is, is making that transition at the moment and uh, trying to kind of iron out the, the kinks of what is often a very square on style. But again, just see that kind of rear hand in a, a very forward parry motion. And sometimes he just overreaches with it and can be vulnerable around the side when he does so. I think a common de denominator for the Muay Thai fighters is that they're all notoriously tough. Mm. So I think even if he does take a few licks, there's a good chance he'll be able to come through it tonight. Corio Regan, you know, he's 5 0, no knockout. So the record suggests that he doesn't punch very hard, but I feel like he probably punches harder than his record suggests. He's, he's reddening up the face of the, the Skowski already. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, more, more likely to uh, to finesse you than, than bludgeon you to death. But you're right, there is reddening on the face and just puts his hands together there. And uh, lands a stiff left hand through the middle. And the guard of Laskowski there just looks for the right hand round the side under the elbow, just pull back out of range two. He's, he's moving his head really nicely, getting out of the way of the oncoming fire from the Polish fighter. And a patient, clinical, sharp start from O'Regan. Very measured. I like what I'm seeing. You know, I like to, to see boxing in its art form. Boxing is the art of hitting and not getting hit. So he's doing a great job of that. He's getting his own shot, shots off, nice and sharp, getting out of the way, getting his head offline. Very sharp start. We'll have a development plan that we'll see him fighting for titles, he says, sometime around the end of this year. Jordan Ellison from Sunderland is. Still listed as uh, Northern Area champion, though he's lost his last three since winning the title. He looks to kind of assume the role of journeyman, taking late notice fights with uh, I think Adam Azim last time out, Louis Sylvester perhaps, and losing all of them. So I can't imagine it'll be long before that title is made vacant. That could be one to aim for for O'Regan in three or four fights' time. Billy Allington, the English champion at 140 from uh, Egham in Surrey, beat Jermaine Camaro on a technical decision after Clash of Heads last September. So maybe they'll run that back. Either way, a few fights before O'Regan ready to 
kind of take on those sorts of challenges. Just 25 years uh, of age, inspiring with uh, Jimmy Joe Flint, who you remember boxed uh, Dom Hunt for the Central Area title late last year. Hunt's still the champion. He was also handpicked for Jack Catterall's preparations against Josh Taylor, and, uh, a sparring partner in the lead up to that one. So crucial top level experience being in and out of world championship camps and well we saw how well it went for, for Jack Cattle not the decision but the performance indeed and well and Regan has got high ambitions and he's going about his work in a professional manner here Laskowski just trying to start a little bit faster in the second than he was in the first seemed to come out and have a little bit of a go to start with again fires that right hand Goya Regan dri do drops underneath it very slick. It's a great experience for him tonight, boxing on a big card like this. He's a Yorkshire lad, he'll have a lot of support here. You know, if he wants to move on into them title fights, these are the nights that he's got to take all that valuable experience from, soak it all up and put it to good use in, in them title fights. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, well, we get an idea of what it will be like to, to reach the, the top level a little bit later on as Josh Warrington walks back into the fire against Kiko Martinez. Will he recapture? The IPF World Featherweight title and set up that potential unification clash with Lee Wood, who performed such heroics against Mick Conlon just two weeks ago in Nottingham. All change, and of course, Jordan, I know you'll be wanting to, to get in on the action some point next year as well. That's it. I feel like I'm in a good position with that European title now. You know, if Kiko and Warrington fancy it after tonight, I'm sure they'll be looking for unification as well, but I'm here here as, as part of, a, of an ever-changing puzzle. Will it change again tonight? Will Martinez remain champion? Anything is possible in boxing. If you need a reminder, just cast your mind back to the last four or five weeks of, of the sport. What a start it has been to 2021. Oregon just holding centre ring here. And the white trunks just trimmed with that mauve tartan. Moskowski, silver trunks trimmed with black being pushed back here and Regan just keeping his work long just shortens up the shots creates a lovely angle and he does do that doing a lot of good things Corey Regan hands nice and high bearing in that hand position bearing his shot selection power skipping forward skipping back moving off the shots really nice I think another level to what he's doing he could could throw a few feints in there try and draw a lead Maybe open something up. These guys are tough. They're, they're, they're coming in with, with the intention of surviving half the time. If they, if they know after a round that they can't hurt you, they're going to try and survive that sixth round. So you've got to do something to them. Open them up to, to open the gap up for that shot. And he's now just trying to work in those two phases. As you say that, just faint the feet, just step out and, and come back with the shots. Laskowski just walks onto one with 10 seconds on the clock where well, you can see why he was such a good amateur, Oregon, and he could well turn into a very good prospect yet. And speaking of top prospects, I think there's no doubt that Dalton Smith is widely becoming, if not already, the country's top boxing prospect tonight. He has the opportunity to rip that label off and replace it with one that says contender because Ray Moylet is not somebody to be taken lightly. Irish fighter beating the who's who of top future Olympic champions and, and world champions in the amateurs. Little steadier progress as a, a professional, a little bit of inactivity too, but certainly will pose challenges that Dalton Smith has, has yet to have faced and will maybe ask him one or two questions he's yet to be asked. And it will be very interesting to see how he deals with them later on. Definitely, I really like the look of Dalton Smith. There's, there's nothing you can't like about Don Smith. He, he looks the real deal. And like you said, he is the best prospect in, in Britain. Looking forward to seeing him into title mix, but he's got to get through tonight first. Second up, round three. That is uh, 10 rounds in the super lightweight division. Second on the bill, live on the zone. They're around about 7.45, I'd imagine, tonight, depending, of course, on how long or short Sky Nicholson and Beck Conley last. That one scheduled for six, opening the show in 25 minutes time from now. Gloria Reed just doubles up that left hand, just picking those long straight shots, holding the, the gap as well, punching long. The 
good Corey Regan. He's a good looking lad. He doesn't look like he gets hit too much. His nose isn't too bent up like mine. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that, that shows he's got the skills, his defense is, is very good, as we've seen so far. Again, just leading off with that stiff left hand, puts the one two behind it. And this is kind of similar to the way that Jeff Afori dealt with Laskowski. As I mentioned, Campbell Hatton, we know in the kind of raw stages, there was a lot of pressure on him. He was, he was keen to impress, marauding forward, kind of smothering his own work a little bit. And with O'Regan here, just keeping everything long, making it easy for himself. And that's really what he, he has to do. That's his imperative at this stage of his career. Just a little blood on, on the back of Laskowski. So I wonder where that is, is coming from. It appear to be cut on his face. Lovely little counter left hand there from O'Regan again, just inching back, bringing the Polish fighter into the space. Starting to up his work rate a little bit now as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's looking for them counters, but still maintaining that work rate. Just, just short there. He's measuring him very well, looking very good, very sharp. You know, he knows this isn't the level that he wants to be fighting at, but this is great experience for him tonight. He knows he's going to be looking at the guys like Jordan Ellison, who you said, for area titles uh, in the near future. And, and even beyond that, you know, there's guys like Ben Field, the Apple Yard, Sean Dodd, Tom Farrell, even up to Kay Prosper and, and Nathan Bennett, who was actually a Don Smith opponent as well. So, you know, guys like that, if he's sparring Don Smith, and, and I'm sure he's doing well with, and learning a lot in the gym, they're the guys that he's going to be looking at. And, and he's going to have his visions on them in the near future. So, you know, he's going through the gears now. Playing some nice body shots there. Mixing it up and, and looking a real real good prospect. Yeah, plenty of, as you, as you mentioned, domestic targets to, to aim for over the next couple of years. And no doubt those opportunities will come his way. Skoski just leaning in, just leading off of that right hand to the body. Just finding it hard to, to get on terms with... A Regan, the foot speed, the hand speed, the balance and the positioning, he's just second best. But he's trying, starting to get difficult in there, just getting kind of tenderised by a really sharp selection of, of shots. Came out to James Brown, the boss, and uh, you know, I think that might be the key to this performance. He's bossing it. He is in full control through these early rounds. Again, just measuring with that jab, just making sure he was he was in range and knew where he was. And, well, everything's just got a purpose, hasn't it? Setting things up nicely. And, well, as you say, his level's above here. And I think after a couple of these sorts of fights, he'll, he'll want to be tested and want to be thrown in at, at kind of area level with somebody that's, that's going to fight back, somebody that can maybe take him six or eight rounds. Of course, if it's an area title, it will be over 10. So that will be a different challenge unto itself. But he's clearly well above this level and well capable of, of beating this sort of opponent. It's just how he's progressing in the gym and whether they feel he's ready to, to step up. Of course, this win tonight would, would take him to 6-0, and barring disaster. Normally, area titles, you kind of find fighters between sort of 9 and, and 11 fights boxing for them. You can get out again quickly. You could see him box for, for an area title in the next six or seven months. Like you said, he had the amateur pedigree, won titles as an amateur. Uh, he's been in some, with some good names that are doing great in the pros. So they're the sort of, sort of the fights that I'm sure he'll be looking at next in the near future. He'll be wanting them challenges. And, you know, he, he's proven tonight that he's sharp enough, he's got the skills, he can definitely move. So that's a great defence. And as well, in these, these eight ounce gloves, people might not know from home, but we're sat with dead ringside. You know, they're snapping them shots. Placing them shots nicely, and that's all you have to do in them eight ounce fly gloves. Let me tell you, you don't have to hit too much. You don't have to load up with mean intentions for every shot to have an effect. He's, he's breaking down. Yeah, I think if you if you're not naturally a, a puncher, placement is is absolutely crucial, isn't it? You know, some people can can really whack, and, and they've always been able to whack. Some some can't, but if you can put the knuckles in the right place, your balance is good, which uh, Regan's is. As you say, there isn't a great deal of padding between the knuckle and and what's landing. 
just sits down on uh, a one-two there. Laskowski just keeps the, the hands high and tight, but those are starting to get through as evidence from the blood just starting to trickle from the nose of the Polish fighter, the reddening around the whole face now. As I mentioned uh, Dickie's gym. He originally went there turning professional just in order to improve his fight conditioning. After training with the owner, Mark Hurley, just decided to make the Batley Gym his, his principal base for boxing training in a bid to move towards title fights this year. Based on what we've seen, of course, this is a, a certain level, of course, the kind of entry level, but as uh, Laskowski's mouthpiece comes out and he just marauds forward, almost in anger, it seemed, there. Seems he, he looks on track and looks ready to, to step up a level and take on those kinds of challenges. Definitely, he's got lovely judge of distance. Seems to just be just be able to get out of the way of, of his final punches. I think you know, a lot of that's natural. That judge of distance comes over time, but it's, a, it's a inner instinct. He's got great instinct. The test, of course, will be how does he respond when he's under sustained pressure how does the chin hold up when is it cleanly how does the engine hold up when he's in the nutritional contest over the 10 or, or the 12 round distance those are the sort of defining questions that often find fighters out who are brilliant amateurs and look the real deal there's you only can, one way to find out Chris absolutely as you as you well know let's have a listen in to the corners then Two downs left. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's little counters available as well, when you're stepping out, you're in a bit too far. Okay. Just distancing out short distance and bring the then come back in. Okay. Chwilę przyjęłeś, przeczekałeś, skontrowałeś. Jemu nie można dać się napędzać, bo wtedy ma czas i bije. Jego trzeba wytrącać z jego rytmu i, i wtedy nie jest taki skuteczny. Well, I'm not sure whether you uh, you caught that at home. It was uh, drowned out a little bit by the uh, the crowd in, in my ears there, and uh, I'm not sure my Polish is, is good enough to, to translate in the Laskowski corner. But Regan in full control, perhaps just maybe could do with going through the gears here, just putting Laskowski under some sustained pressure because he's in such control. Anything missing is just the the finish. It hasn't really looked like hurting him so far, but sitting down on these left hands now. Again, holding that distance, just trying to wait for Laskowski to, to make a mistake. But I think it's fair to say the Polish fighter's just starting to go into his shell now. That's going to make him even harder to catch clean. Definitely. He knows he's out of his depth. Corey O'Regan knows that he can go through the gears now if he wants. So I'd like to see him go through the gears, put some shots together, a few combinations. Let's, uh, let's get the party started tonight. I think there's a, there's a great crowd in. Let's give him something to get excited about. Just trying to catch him with that. Right hook on the way in, Laskowski just leads with the right hand, just dipped over his front foot. Bo Regan wasn't able to, to take advantage. Stiff left hand through the middle again. Laskowski just walking forward for the first time in about three rounds here. Regan, he's trying to turn the knuckles over on that left hand, isn't he? He is, he's, he's moving nicely to his right. Just switched to orthodox now. Looks for that over and right. Yeah, Laskowski looked for one as well. Just clipped the shoulder of O'Regan. He's just high on the toes. Again, just turning through those one-twos. One thing applying the pressure with, with the punches. One thing applying the pressure with the feet. I feel like sometimes you need to faint. You need to trigger these guys. It's a making mistake. Draw a lead, counter. Just like that. Well, that was a counter uppercut we talked about a little earlier on. It's because he, he does tend to kind of dip over his front foot and present the target. He really hasn't found that until now. Nice jab to the body. 
Skoski too hasn't switched until this point in the contest really either. Hook into the body, just turned it over to the head, lands another one off the back of it. Just a little bit of a breakthrough here for O'Regan with 10 seconds on the clock in round number five. You mentioned the Muay Thai fighters, they are they are teak tough and haven't ever seen him in, in real trouble, Luskowski. And he took a fair few at the end there. And O'Regan, well, he, he did try and sit down on the shots in that round. You could just see the effort and, and the way he was just turning through them. There's the the right hand that just landed, dug a few into the body as well, but hard to put a dent in this fella. Yeah, I feel like he was having an effect towards the end. The body shots were really nice, sunk them in really well. Um, he's just an awkward guy. This guy is switching south, or switching north cops, and he uh, comes in with, with attacks out of nowhere. So you've got to be careful. You can't just throw course to the win and go all out right to there. try and stop these guys. So Corey Rugan's doing a great job. He's measuring that distance well. He's sinking them body shots in now. Headshots are coming behind him. And, and I feel like he's having a dent. Trouble is, this is the sixth and final round. So he's got a survivor on the round. I think maybe we have, but Corey O'Regan will want to try and put a punctuation on this if he can. He's won pretty much every second of every round in the Leeds Arena so far. And he just started to turn the screw a little bit in round number five. And just his body language at the start of this round is telling us that he's going to try and do a little more of the same over these next three minutes. Just steps in behind that stiff southpaw jab, just touches upstairs with the left hand, puts the hands together. Laskowski covers up and sensibly just gets himself back to centre ring, a little bit of space behind him. As Koski keep him dead tight, he knows this is Corey Oregon's chance to go through the gears and, and get that stoppage in the final round. Yeah, this is one fighter looking for the stoppage, another looking for survival at this stage. Sinks the left hand into the body, just chops the right behind it. Laskowski just swings again and a miss. Really for O'Regan, a kind of sparring exercise over these last six rounds. He's going to need tougher tests than this. It's great experience for him, though. He's, he'll have been doing this in the gym, day in, day out, for weeks and months on him. So to do it under the lights is a different story. And he's really done it tonight. No matter what the opponent is in front of him, he's looked at business. His, his time has been good. He's gone through the, gone through the gears. Shot selection has been great. Oh, he's measured him very well. Very impressive. Yeah, it's been a decent show so far as well. Callum French getting uh, first stoppage in his second contest against uh, Belgian Angelo Turco to uh, open proceedings. Marley Wright settling the score against Luis Palmer, who he drew against just four weeks ago. And a uh, very disaster. And I don't want to put commentators curse on it. I don't think there's any chance of anything going wrong in this last minute. Corey O'Regan just looks in such full control against Jakub Laskowski. He's on the way to a sixth victory uh, as a professional. Skowski just lands a right hand, just crashes against the guard. O'Regan responds, sinks a couple into the body. Picked a nice uppercut out there. Again to the body. Again, Skowski's hands were, were low, just the, the right hook just caught him, turned the cheek. And he's used the kind of blueprint that Jeff Afori set a few months ago. And the way that he dealt with him just kept things long, nice and sharp. Didn't get too greedy and just turned the screw as the rounds went on. And that is the way to, to deal with somebody like Laskowski. Just gives you a little bit of time to see those wild ones coming when you're, you're at range. You've got sharp reflexes, good feet like a Regan has. But he's happy to stand and trade with him now. Laskowski swinging and hitting thin air as he has done for the last six rounds. All in the bank, all for that man, Corey O'Regan, who will undoubtedly move to 6-0 here in Leeds, ahead of a stellar night of action on the zone around the world. All starts at 7 o'clock and nine minutes from now. Sky Nicholson against Beck Connolly, Dalton Smith in action against Ray Moylet as well. 
So Maxi Hughes and Ryan Walsh do battle too. Ebony Bridges taking on Maria Cecilia Roman for the IBF Women's World title. Shannon Courtney sat down at the commentary desk next to me, ready to call some of the action with our team tonight as well. And of course, all set to the table ahead of a, a big main event five years after they met Josh Warrington and Kiko Martinez will do battle. Who'd have thought Martinez will be champion in 2022? But he is, and that is boxing. It'll be 12,000 here in the Leeds Arena to witness that one later on. But a good way to cap off proceedings on Before the Bell. Really appreciate your company wherever you've watched uh, around the world. We're now ready to get, I think, a fairly inevitable result here between O'Regan and Laskowski. But let's head over to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing here in Leeds, we go to referee Steve Gray's court scorecard. It reads 60 to 54. For your winner, he's still undefeated, Corey O'Regan. So as expected, Corey O'Regan across the cards takes his...